last night, me and Dakota, we went down to the lake to do a little catfishing. And I had such faith in the spot that I didn't even film an intro. <laughs> but this is how it went. Bitty old bass. He probably went two and a half pounds. Ate my dang bluegill. I think that bite before that was a flathead. So got something. Bigger, just meaner. It's a little wannabe flathead. I noticed that after the spawn, they turn orange. Like it's really pretty orange. So they must be coming out of spawn. So put them back. Yep, this is the way it starts. Little babies show up and then they get bigger. So, definitely found the babies. <laughs> Right here, this sucker went into a cave and it took me a while to pull him out. This is where a really good fishing line comes into play. Uh, I'm using Berkley Big Game 30 pound and it's got really great abrasion resistance and so I was able to pull that sucker out. Oh, I seem to have lost my headlight, <laughs> but they're getting bigger. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm running out of bait. Oh, ow, 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 you turd. You turd. I almost had you. I almost had you back in the water. You got to do that.
So we're back today to catch some bait, some bluegill, some live bluegill. Man, there's some activity over here too. Woo, get back in there. And for bait, we're using a uh, soldier fly larva. They uh they like to nest in my worm bin every summer and they make excellent bait and the chickens like it too, so it's a twofer. Okay, so y'all are probably wondering two things. One, why aren't I in the boat? Well, it's because I ran the boat out of gas going around looking for catfishing spots. I did find some really nice spots, so I will be hitting those here shortly. And uh, two, why do I keep going to this same spot if I haven't caught anything there in about a month? Well, it's because it's a flathead spawning ground. I found years ago, pretty much when I first got here, that bluff wall, that's where they spawn. And there's two times out of the year I know there's going to be flatheads uh, right in this spot. It's uh, right before the spawn, when they gather up, feed, before they go to the, the cliffs. And when they're leaving the spawn, they gather up there again to go feed on these bluegill that are in the back of this cove. So uh, that's why I keep going there and checking it. And uh, seems like last from what I'm seeing last night, it's starting. And it usually starts, not that I'm a flathead expert or anything, it starts with really little flatheads. And then as the days go... They get bigger and bigger. And so uh, I'm just going to keep fishing there until they stop biting. Because why would I go driving around the lake when I got flatheads right here? So that's what I'm going to do. But first, we got to get bait. So get off your butt. I'm seeing a lot of bubbles down there. Those might be carp, though. Might be shad flickering. If it's shad, I'm going to go get my dang cast net. <laughs> but this spot is always loaded with bluegill and bass. So, I even spent the night catfishing here about a week ago in the boat. I was in that spot right there for 13 hours straight. I had some catfish bites because I got slimed, but I didn't catch anything. I did, however, see like a four, I'm, it's being conservative, a 40 pound flathead swim right next to my boat. I was using that green light. And I was like, I was falling asleep. It was like three o'clock in the morning. And that flathead swam by, I swear. It was like a shotgun and 10 Red Bulls or something. <laughs> it woke me up, that's all I gotta say. Didn't catch him though, but I know he's there. Or he was there. It. I changed my mind. There's so much bait over here. We're going to fish over here tonight. And, uh, in the boat. Oh, now I'm trying to hit a hole, and uh, I don't really have a way of showing you guys this yet. I'm using the the full version of Navionics on my phone. And I don't have a way to transfer that to the computer where I definitely show you guys the hole I'm trying to hit. My anchoring skills are not exactly uh, perfected yet. We'll just say that. I'm getting better, but they're not. I'm not there yet. I wonder if I shouldn't have moved further back, but I'll find out shortly. <laughs> Every time I hear the live wheel rattling, I'm just like, did I put the plug in? <laughs> so I got to anchor the front and the back, but uh, I ain't that good at anchoring, so... We're going to be drifting a little bit <laughs> back and forth. <laughs> the anchor on the front is just a rock, so not real anchor. It's probably bouncing. And we got Gar here too, of course. This is a SEMA float that uh, Zach sent me a couple years ago. And uh, what's pretty cool about it, it has like a little hole for a light stick so you can use it at night. I like it. All right, so that's the first rig. Big old float, one ounce sinker, bead, swivel, and then a six-hawk. What is that? 
Six sided circle hook. <laughs> and a glow stick. The glows in the dark. And then of course we have the old green light. So, I was really impressed with this the last time I used it. It was really the first time I got to use it. Like really use it. And I liked it, so we're going to keep doing it until I figure out it's bad. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I have this, <coughs> this battery for about 10 years, and uh, I think I charged it twice, and it's still freaking good. It lasts all night long. And then last time I was here, I did these drop lines, which is basically like a limb line. But I'm using the cleats on the boat and just dropping them straight down. And uh, I got catfish slime on one of them, so something bit it. But I don't have any bells on it right now. I need to go to Wally World and get a package of bells for five bucks and stick some bells on it. Because I can't tell when I get a bite unless it shakes the boat. So, you got to get lucky at this point in time. There we go. So it's just like a seven knot hook, circle hook. 50 pound uh, big game swivel, one ounce weight, and then uh, I think it's like 300, 300 pound braided tar line. Not a freaking car! Oh my god! <laughs> Another freaking car, man! This one's pretty big. Yeah. You deserve to get manhandled. Or woman handled, I should say. <laughs> I just reset that line. Oh, this is a different line. Oh, I'm tempted. I'm so tempted. Well, got something. <laughs> Quit chewing on my beat. As I was resetting the line, I noticed that the boat started to swing pretty wild, left and right. And for a second, I mean, it's like 3 o'clock in the morning, I couldn't figure out what was going on. And then I realized that the gar had knocked my rock anchor loose. Basically, it came out of the, the hold and the boat was just drifting back and forth pretty crazy. So I had to pull the back anchor, yank everything out of the water, and go get me another rock. We got a bunch of crappie. The color they seem to like is the green and the black.
jar. Let me guess. A nice bunch, huh? Chew. Where's my spring? I'm over here trying to catch crappie. <laughs> my rod's going all crazy. Oh, yeah, that was a long night. Golly. <laughs> hey, but at least I got lunch, right? A lot of gar, a lot of gar bites. But at least I got that one bass. You can see the sunrise. Check it out. That signals it's time for me to go. <laughs> I've been up uh, 24 hours now. <sighs> Freaking catfish, man. I should have. Should have, would have, could have, right? This is what I did, so. That's what I did. I got a mess to clean up. Oh my gosh. I was trying to crappie. On that green light, the crappie were coming up, and uh, and I was using this guy, and they would turn on it and go after it, but at the last second they would turn away, so it wasn't right. I tried all kinds of different colors. I got crap all over the damn place, <laughs> but I couldn't get them to bite, so I screwed up twice. I learned two lessons last night when I lost the, uh, I have been sitting in that spot for hours, uh, Five, I've been sitting in that spot for five hours. Finally got the shad coming in. And I was just about to throw a cast net on them and get some shad. When I lost my front anchor, which is a rock. And uh, so then I had to land and get another rock. And then I couldn't find, I couldn't get back to the spot where I was. I didn't really know it was dark. And so I came over here. Again, threw the green light in to try to get shad in. Shad started to come in. And then I caught the bass, and I threw the bass on the stringer off the side of the boat. As soon as I threw that bass off the side of the boat, all the shad freaking disappeared. All I had were like these little bitty minnows. So, uh, that's a lesson learned too. Makes sense, you got a predator right there, and then you got shad. So, or, you have a predator right there, and then you have your tractor. It doesn't make sense, because they're going to go somewhere else. And they did. So what did I learn? Oh. Tie a better knot on your anchor rock, <laughs> or get an anchor, something. <laughs> and two, don't throw a, a predator fish on a stringer right next to your green light, because uh, they take off. So I didn't get any shad. Well, I got a couple of shad. I did manage to get a couple. In fact, yeah, there's nothing on there. They probably got eaten by the gar. Anyway, if y'all made it this far, thank you for watching. Thank you for being patient. The way I see it, I got the bass down now. I can pretty much catch bass anytime I want. Like, I got the bass down. Now I'm trying to get the catfish down. It took me, I would say four years to get the bass down. Hopefully it doesn't take me four years to get the catfish down. Cause I would really like to start doing more catfishing, but if I can't make videos, 
Well, there might just be a lot of skunk videos. Who knows? I don't know what I'm going to do. But uh, I do want to target cats. Uh, the next video is probably going to be a gar kitchen cook. <laughs> it's the lobster of the lake. Why not, right? Oh, these guys have got me so ticked off. I've been catfishing a lot. You guys haven't seen the videos because <clears throat> I've been fighting gar this whole freaking time. And I haven't been catching anything, and so I'm not putting out any videos, but I've... I've been on at least nine, nine or ten trips here in the last two weeks, just trying to figure out where these cats are. Of course, it's also awful timing, but, uh... I forgot what I was saying. I need to go to bed. <laughs> Gar. Anyway, the next video is going to be a gar kitchen cook. I'm going to make me a little special hook, put a bluegill on there, and I'm going to pull one of them bad boys in and stick him in the freaking hot grease. <laughs> After that, I have these uh, spots I picked out running gas out of my boat. Uh, I don't have electronics, so I don't know if there's fish there, but I have uh, navionic, navionics, so I, I can see the the lay of the land. Man, I need to get some sleep. Uh, anyway, I have some spots picked out. I want to do some catfishing, but uh, I think first I'm going to get some revenge on some gar. So. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. Try it without the trolley motor in the water. Thank you. 